What's going on fishy friends? Rich here, Rich's Fishes, and I think we're long overdue for another fish room unboxing video. All right, guys, I think it's about that time. Time to see what I got at Discus Madness. It's been quite a long time since I've done any unboxing videos. Yeah, actually, that's a lie. I do have quite a bit of footage and some random unboxings that I have done in the past year or so during my absence of YouTube. Um, give me a shout out in the comments below if that's something that you guys would like to see or not. I know it's not maybe live, it's not current, but there's still some unboxing stuff. And on that same note, one of the reasons why I've been gone for such a long time, I was embarrassed to admit this the other day, but I had some serious computer issues. You see, I used to watch a lot of videos from Michael's Fish Room and roughly a year or so ago I took his advice and I obliterated that subscription button and and my computer went kablooey and I just couldn't make YouTube videos after that. Well anyway, who wants to see what I got at Discus Madness? Stay tuned for the unboxing portion of the video and then we'll take a look at what these fish are doing since. I am back from my trip to Discus Madness where I picked up a hopefully a pair of these uh, golden rams. They're floating in the bag here and getting properly acclimated to the same temperature as the tank water. I am 99% sure I'm gonna go ahead and put them in this tank right here. I may end up playing around with a couple of things real quick. Um, let me see if I can't show you. I might end up taking the tanks that are down there on the bottom row that are already drilled and move them up to the middle row and move a couple of things around. Found some more eggs in a ram tank last night, and they don't look very good today already. Most of them look like they've already fallen off the plate. I'm not exactly sure why. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a box that I picked up from Tom from Coral Bandit. And let's see what we got in here. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got. Probably the tiny, these are a Crebenzis. Uh, I forget the exact name. I'm gonna have to look it up again later. Let's see, we got a pair of electric blue rims. I'm just gonna... Walk her through. These are a pair that Tom has labeled black number one. Well, it looks like a date of 12-2. So our three female for me to add to some lonely males. And a pair of beautiful German blue rams. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let these guys warm up a little bit. They've been in the car with me for a while. Uh, they were well insulated for sure, but since Tom wasn't actually shipping these, uh, I physically picked these up from Tom earlier. He didn't include any heat packs, rightfully so. There was no need to do that. So these fish are gonna sit here for a little bit and warm up a tiny bit while I figure out where exactly everyone's gonna go. All right, guys, so here are the golden rams that I got at Discus Madness.
I took a little bit of time scouring the tank uh, when I was at the store, and I found what looked like a pair. They were hanging out down at the bottom of the tank amongst all the fish, kind of chasing a few others away. Um, there's the male there. Ooh, where'd you go? And there's his girlfriend. And I probably, honestly, I might have had a little trouble sexing these if they hadn't been paired up already. That female shows some traits that I find characteristic of a male. Um, since these aren't German rams, you can't use some of the traits as far as the colors and the, the black spot and how much blue might be in it and things like that. So I always go for the length of the anal fin and whether or not it crosses into that caudal fin, the tail. Um, and I might have had trouble had they not been showing signs of pairing up at the store. But boy, oh boy, was my instinct correct. Let me come around to the other side of the tank here. So, according to my notes on the tank, now that I've been keeping notes on tanks, I came home with these fish on February 17th. And on February 19th, I got eggs in the tank. And here we are a couple of days later with some free swimming fry. Now for all the trouble I've had in this fish room trying to get fish breed over the years, things are finally starting to pop for me, but boy is there a learning curve when it comes to artificially raising some of these fry. Um, I'm making quite a few stupid mistakes and I'm really starting to kick myself over it. Uh, for example, in this particular tank, I got a small dip and pour container hanging inside of this 10 gallon tank. And in that way I can pull the eggs, let them sit inside the dip and pour container and they still get the benefit of the heat from the main tank and they are in the smaller volume of water. But what happened the other day was I was doing a water change in the main part of the tank. I had the lid covering the dip and pour here. I had um, done a water change in the dip and pour too, so the water was down to about here. But the dip and pour couldn't float because the lid was holding it down. I wasn't paying attention. I had my valve on right there that was putting fresh water into the tank in an effort to do that water change. And I didn't pay attention. This particular tank isn't drilled, so when the water started to reach the top, it overflowed into the dip and pour, causing the dip and pour to overflow back into the tank, and I lost at least 50% of the fry into the tank. Um, there's nothing saying that the fry couldn't survive, but I scooped up as many as I could. I don't see any more since, and I'm down at least 50% from you know the day before that big snafu, which is kind of a shame. But things happen, I suppose. And all in all, we might be well, because there are definitely some viable fry here. With each batch of these that I'm artificially arranging, uh, uh, raising, I'm getting a tiny, tiny bit better each time. My, my very first two batches, I've moved over here into this container, which is a little bit less than a gallon. There are not a whole ton of fry in here. And right now they look fat and lethargic because they're all full of brine shrimp. And I'm having trouble focusing. And we're not going to focus right now. But anyway, that's my first batch with probably, I don't know, there's less than a dozen that are actually in here. And these particular fish, eggs were laid on January 23rd and 28th. Now let's see, what else did I pick up when I was over at Discus Madness the other day? Uh, when I was there, I met up with Tom, a coral bandit, and I got a few more fish from him. Tom gave me three females that I put into this tank here with a couple of lonely males that I had. There is one of the males. It's a pretty good looking male. He's all colored up. He is showing off to his female friends. And there is one female right there that I think is partnering up with that male that I just showed. She's all colored up too. Second male, second female. These two seem to have paired up and I pulled the third female already, moved her over here into this tank where I've had a male and a female who don't seem to particularly enjoy each other's company. The male looks real good. Um, there is the third female that Tom brought me, which really looks like a dark 
a dark ram or a black ram. Talk a little bit more about that later. And the other female who I initially tried to pair up with this handsome devil here is usually hiding up in a corner. It's not a very big tank, but for somehow I, I'm always unable to find her. Uh, she's in there somewhere. I just saw her earlier. But let's see. So I came home with these fish from Tom on the 17th, just like the gold rams. Actually, I think it was the 16th. I went and tried to make corrections on a lot of the tanks. I think the date on my watch was a day off, actually. So these were the 16th. So back here behind me in the gold rams, um, where I wrote 217, it should actually say 216, but whatever, that's irrelevant. Still, within a couple of days of bringing them home, I got those fry. And then let's see, so on 224, one of the females that I grabbed from Tom, Laid eggs right there on that dish. Matter of fact, I don't think she's realized that the eggs are gone, which is kind of strange how that happens sometimes. But I pulled them and I tried artificially rearing in this particular dip and pour container. Um, there's very few surviving wigglers right now. It's weird, this batch seems to be progressing a lot slower than all my others. Um, and there definitely is a remarkably small number of survivors of this batch compared to others. You can see a couple of wigglers bouncing around on the bottom of the container. But nothing to write home about. But it was encouraging to see these two guys pair up rather quickly and I'm 90% sure that these two paired up and are getting ready to spawn very shortly. He is starting to clean off parts of that dish, parts of that clay saucer, or terracotta, whatever you want to call it. They have been defending their individual corners. I put this big flower pot in the middle, hopefully as a visual sight break. Let's see, what else do we got? Then I got two German blue rams from Tom that went into this tank. There's the male. And there's the female in the back. They've been showing some interest over here in this corner where I have this stone set up if they choose to start breeding. Hopefully they do as well. I also picked up from Tom a pair of electric blue rams. And I put them here up in this 12 gallon tank where I previously had a pair of Epistogramma that were sold to me as Viajita. Uh, I'm starting to doubt they are Viajita or were Viajita and are probably a McMasteri. That's a topic for another day. But anyway, a while ago, uh, the female in this tank laid eggs for the very first time um, and I ended up losing her, literally losing her. Never found a body in the tank, outside of the tank. Not sure what the hell happened to her. It's been a couple of weeks and she's been gone. So I added a pair of electric blue rams on 217 or 216, depending on which date my watch actually said. On 221, I found eggs and we've now got a nice little cloud of electric blue ram fry back there. But I'll be damned if I didn't lose the female electric blue ram the day after she laid eggs as well. So there's something up with this tank where once a female decides she's ready to spawn in here, she literally disappears. So I got one female epistogramma, gone, nobody inside or outside of the tank. A couple of weeks later, female electric blue ram, same Bermuda Triangle style problem where she's just gone. But while I didn't get to uh, raise any of the epistogramma fry, hopefully I will get a chance to raise some of these electric blue ram fry. We're focusing more on the brine shrimp than we are on the fry here. Not sure why. So they are happy in their dip and pour container. Come around the corner this way. We've got an older batch 
from that male here the female is hiding uh, there's a bunch of brine and you can see some of the fry through the oh you could see some of the fry uh, where do we go They're happily gobbling away on some baby brine. And then a couple of days, just a couple of days ago, I actually caught this pair in the act. Here's a little bit of footage of that. And here's the resulting eggs that I'm gonna rear up. These were laid on 226 in the evening. In the morning of 227, I pulled the stone. And, uh, no, in the morning of 226, I pulled the stone, and today is 227. Hopefully these guys will be wigglers by tomorrow evening when I get home. It looks like the uh, success rate is relatively high on this batch. There's very few eggs then ended up turning white. Let's see if I can't turn off the air. Which one is it? I gotta come up over here to the small gang valve because I was tired of leaning all the way over the tanks back there to my central air system. I've taken to using these small drops now too. Uh, I'll turn the air off real quick. And still won't be able to focus. But there we go, we can see one, two, three, four. You can almost count the number of eggs that turned white and might not be viable. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good sign. So these should be a bunch of wigglers and free swimmers relatively soon. Let's get the air back on so I can keep... The idea of blowing the air like that is to keep water moving up past the eggs, mimicking what the parents would do in the wild, which is fanning the eggs and blowing water over them to prevent them from fungusing up. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be it for now. Let me know down below if anybody wants to see some more footage of those German blue rams as they breed. I think it's a pretty interesting process to watch. And also let me know if anybody wants to see any more of those unboxing videos that I got some old footage of. I'll also be, uh, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, well, not obviously, how would you guys know? I'm gonna try to, to start airing some of the footage that I obtained in the past year, uh, some various chores and tasks and, and jobs that I handled down here in the fish room. Uh, just because I wasn't posting to YouTube doesn't mean I didn't necessarily take footage. So I do have a bit to, uh, to show everybody. So let me know what you're interested, interested in seeing below. And I'll see you guys next time.